This is the story of a wildlife mystery so big it's jumbo sized. Almost nothing was known about these unusual elephants until now. They were recently discovered to be unique to the tropical island of Borneo. Then came news that their survival is in peril, and now the race is on to save them. But first, this man must uncover the secrets of their jungle life, follow them into their world, and get closer to them than anyone has ever tried before. He will discover the wonder and tragedies of Borneo's pygmy elephants. Saba, the jewel of Borneo. Its ancient tropical rainforests hide remarkable animals, many found nowhere else in the world. Living on an island means that animals here have evolved into wonderful and unique forms. The largest of them are its pygmy elephants. They are rare and elusive and mysterious. Until now, it was thought that they had descended from domesticated elephants introduced to Borneo only 300 years ago as gifts to local sultans, and that these had escaped and gone wild and become a pest. But all that changed. Wildlife ranger Engelbert Dausip was sent out to collect samples of their DNA as part of a routine test of all of Asia's elephants. His samples revealed that Borneo's elephants should be considered a unique subspecies. They're smaller than other Asian elephants, possibly an adaptation to life in deep jungle. Scientists calculate they have lived here not for 300 years, but more like 300,000 years. This amazing discovery has given the elephants new protection and Bert a new job. He is called to Kota Kinabalu, the state capital, for a meeting with his project leaders, who are responsible for protecting the elephants. No, we just cannot protect them if... Dr. Rosa and Dr. Sen are from Sabah Wildlife Department. Raymond Alfred from Worldwide Fund for Nature. Keep in touch with us daily, OK? Bert is to track the elephants, map their migration route, and learn everything about them he can. Also around Menango, but in the mall, Difficult terrain, and this is a very swampy area. His journey will take him into places where few have set foot a journey into the unknown. Forest elephants are migratory. They could be anywhere in the thick forest. Bert's expedition will travel through eastern Saba, where all the elephants live. He wants to find an elephant family that lives along the Kinabatangan River. But much of the riverside forest has been cut down for oil palm plantations. Could they block elephant migration routes or pose other dangers? To answer these questions, he must first find them. And he has an idea where they may be. Elephant must drink a great amount of water. They come to the river in the early morning and late afternoon. Each day, his search begins and ends on the river. During the heat of the day, he searches the jungle. Every clue takes him closer to the elephant. Elephant dung, but it is mushroom growing on it. 
It's maybe one week old. All the signs are old. The trail is cold. The heat is oppressive. Temperature and humidity are both in the 90s. Sometimes he uses listening trees. Elephants call to each other to stay in contact. But there's nothing. For many days, he searches up and down the Kinabatangan River and its maze of tributaries. This expedition is the chance of a lifetime. I must not fail. I will find them. If anyone can find them, Bert will. He was born here in Saba and has spent much of his adult life as a wildlife ranger. Finally, contact. There is just one call, and it sounds far away. He follows the sound of the call up a side creek. From now on, he must take extreme care. Forest elephants around the world are very unpredictable. They can be dangerous killers. He has found them, and they will be well aware of him. Elephants have an extremely powerful sense of smell. They can smell me, which is good. I want them to know I'm here. He's close enough to hear them breathe, but still they're as invisible as ghosts. And they're on the move. Better not to follow them now. It's late. It's time to leave. An encounter with the elephants in the dark could be fatal. Fixing their location by GPS should make them easier to locate tomorrow. Today, at dusk, I found them at last. I think there are ten elephants in the group. But they could travel far during the night. I hope I won't lose them again. Bert returns to the same place. No sight of them. But there is sound. It's some distance off. At least he has a direction. Elephant going that way. A sign. Butterflies are attracted by the salt and minerals in fresh urine. This means the elephants are just a few minutes ahead.
They are all around me. That was close. Bert has found them, but there is a bull male here too, and he's after a mate. A bull like this can be so aggressive, even other bulls will stay out of his way. makes a distinctive whistling sound, advertising his extreme arousal. The smell from the oozing musk gland on his head is overpowering. Whether this strong smell is attractive to females, no one knows, but soon he is mating. Very few have ever been this close to Borneo's elephant. But Bert won't risk getting down until the bull has gone. Two young elephants catch my eye. A male with tusks and a female. They are maybe four years old and they like to play. He decides to get closer, but is very aware of the risk. Are they as aggressive as other forest elephants? At first, the mother are curious. But slowly they move away. I think they are protecting their babies. The two youngsters that have been playing have stayed. Bert presents his own trunk to them. The young female seems curious too, but then she turns and tries to kick me. It's an unusual defense, and Bert can easily evade her. She can't see behind her, so cannot aim her kicks that well. I will call this female Flora. Flora and Bert play a game of cat and mouse, but she is not aggressive. She's setting boundaries on how close he can come. Then the young male approaches. He's even rowdier. I hope he will accept me. But he, too, challenges me. I would call him Feisty. From what I saw today, I don't think these elephants are dangerous. They just don't want me to come too close. It's an important and welcome discovery.
Next day, he again meets Feisty and Flora. Flora's kung fu kicks are getting more accurate. They are teaching me a lesson. They only try to kick me when I get too close. Now Bert can see just how different pygmy elephants are from their mainland cousins. They're a metre shorter, with much longer tails, rounder heads and bigger ears. So how did these unique animals get to Borneo in the first place? Scientists believe they walked here during an ice age when sea levels were lower. But why are they found only in northeastern Sabah? There is a mountain range that blocks much of Sabah from the rest of Borneo, but not all. There must be another reason. It seems the answer is because this area has something that elephants need. Good soil, rich in minerals. Here lie the highest concentration of minerals in Borneo. And when not supping on mud, they eat more than 160 different kinds of plants. They spend much time eating elephant grass. And they're especially fond of roots. Males with long tusks have an expert way to dig them out. They also have a passion for fruit, especially figs. The family can find ripening figs at any time of year. But on this tree, most of the fruit is out of reach. An orangutan and her young baby have it all to themselves. But this female is determined to get some. She may have to rely on the generosity of the orangutan. Finding figs is hard work in this heat. After a good day's feeding, this tusker takes a well-earned break. But for Bert, there's no rest. For two weeks, he has been tracking them down river, a few kilometers a day, always keeping his distance. That is, until the day when Flora approaches him. He's wary. She still kicks at him sometimes. She walks forward slowly, then reaches out to me. It's a breakthrough, and Flora's acceptance of him seems to change the mood of the rest of the family. The mothers and aunties show him the youngest baby. They're very protective. I feel safe with them now. I feel confident I can follow them easily. A 
Over the next few days, he has some remarkable encounters as they reveal to him the mysteries of their private lives. The young male, feisty, is a show-off. He's always playing with something. The big female leader also accepts me. I call her Fern. I feel I'm part of her family now. He can almost predict where they will be, and wherever they are, Flora's always taking center stage. It's like she's in charge. Perhaps she is a future leader. Fern is spending more time on her own. I think it is because she is about to give birth. She is very pregnant. Elephants love to touch one another. If not by trunk, then they body touch. A young female, maybe her daughter, shows great interest in Fern's condition. Her sensitive trunk finds the milk which Fern has begun to produce. For a long time, she stays close. It's as if she's listening to the baby. Then a smaller one comes and also wants to touch her. Because she's so close to giving birth, she's already lactating. Then the two young elephants crouch down and suckle her. It is an amazing sight. I have read that young Asian elephants comfort feet for up to five years, but this one must be even older. Bert's patience has earned their trust. It's almost as if he's now part of the family. The family often crosses the Kinabatangan River. But one night, instead of continuing downstream as they have been for the past few days, they move back upstream. When rain comes to Saba, it comes hard and without warning. It can disrupt even the most resourceful. All except the elephants, who enjoy the cooler temperatures. By the time the rain stops, the elephants are long gone. There's no sound, no clues.
Bert's only option is to go back on the river. But he's now unsure where they might be, or which direction they're headed. Much of the elephant's home range has changed dramatically over the years. Great plantations of oil palm trees now stretch across their migration routes. In some places, the natural forest has been removed, right down to the riverbank. If elephants cannot follow the river, they must detour around plantations. Changes like this increasingly bring elephants and people together. Until recently, elephants were too shy to enter villages. Now they have no choice. The plantations force them to divert from their migration routes. In earlier times, villagers would shoot troublemaking elephants. <laughs> These villagers enjoy them. Fortunately, the elephants seem relaxed and behave themselves. All except one, a bull that's been shadowing the family. He decides to help himself to the banana crop. Lone bulls often cause trouble. They're driven mainly by lust and hunger. The villagers won't tolerate this kind of destruction and have ways to scare off the elephants with homemade cannons. Bert has been searching downriver. He now receives word of the pygmy elephant's visit to the village. OK, OK, OK. He also hears that apart from the troublemaker, they are regular and welcome visitors here. The villagers are kind to the elephant, and in return, the elephants are not afraid or aggressive. This is good news. He also finds out what direction they went, which gives him a good idea of the next place he might find them. And it's not going to be easy. The elephants have headed into swampland. It's midday and oppressively hot. The elephants seem uncomfortable. To keep cool, Flora is mud bathing. But Feisty is determined to have his turn. When she's done, Flora cleans the mud from the same glands between her toes. Elephant always keep this very clean. Elephants have an even stronger sense of smell than dogs. Their trunks constantly explore the world around them. Then Bert notices something unusual. All the adult females are grouped together. Something has their attention. A newborn baby. Very young. One week old. This must be the matriarch, Fern's baby. She came into the swamp to give birth. Baby's sleeping. 
They're keen to blow away any bothersome insects. She wants to sleep, but the mother and the aunties want her to get up. Now that it is cooler, the females want to go to the river, but the baby wants to stay. At first, I wonder if she is sick, but then I realize that she is just very young and very tired. She is also hungry. I call the baby Faith. Baby Fig is in no hurry to go anywhere. After a drink, she just wants to get back to sleep. Only the youngsters are really active now. Five tea is thirsty. Adults drink 200 litres every day. Is this why Fern comes to the swamp to have a baby? so that she has plenty of water. Flora too is having a good time. But all her frolicking wakes the baby. And now with the baby roused, Fern signals the family to move. Feisty and Flora will have to finish their water sports another time. As they move out of the swamp, Bert and Feisty have an encounter. He comes forward to challenge me, but I stand my ground. This time, he stops and backs off. Feisty and I now understand each other. Finally, the family gets to cool off by the river. It's probably the first time they've been here since Fig was born. Now Fig meets the river that will run through the centre of her life. She may still be drinking and swimming here 70 years from now. Flora's life could be considerably shorter if she can't get feisty off her back. Logging barges are a sure sign that the pygmy elephant's world is changing fast. The logs come from forest where the elephants once fed. This area will soon become another oil palm plantation. As Bert is discovering, this family's traditional migration route is being destroyed by villages, plantations, and now this cleared forest. I worry about this family. This may be the last time Baby Fig and the others will walk on this ground. Next time, it will be plantation. Flora is curious about the logs. Even a logging camp has plenty to interest a curious elephant. Fern's trumpet means it's time to go. At least for now, 
the family can continue on its journey. Bert can hear them throughout the night. They're very noisy and seem restless. The next morning, Bert follows the noise. But he's in for a great surprise. A huge gathering of elephants. There are so many of them. At first I don't recognize them. I think it is another family. Then I see Flora, Feisty, Fig, all my family. But there are many others too. There could be 50 elephants here from several families. It's a family reunion. They greet by smelling each other. Some clean their trunks by rolling under their food. To meet relations you haven't smelled for months, the trunk must be in top condition. But then Bert discovers that this gathering is not such a happy occasion. I see an elephant with a bad wound. There is a rope coming from it. It has been caught by a snake. There's another one with much older one. Then I see a youngster with a snake around its trunk. This is terrible. Another elephant shows concern. How can it survive? Some wounds carry a certain death sentence. Infection is likely. Perhaps gangrene has already set in. Bert must get some photographic evidence of this. These horrific injuries must be made known to his colleagues. Download it on my PC. Chief Veterinarian Dr. Sen receives the call. Coming in now. Then Bert downloads his images. Oh no. They have never seen injuries like this. And immediately they launch a rescue mission. Wild pigs are the real target of the snares. Every snare is a secret killer waiting to spring. All it takes to make a snare is a bent over tree sapling and a hidden loop of rope. When an animal triggers the snare, it is held tight. As it struggles, the rope tightens even more. Villagers tell me that poachers set snares for bushmeat. Elephants are caught by accident. But a rope tied tightly around the limb will never come off. It's made of tough synthetic strands that won't rot. Elephants are destined to carry them for the rest of their lives, unless they can be rescued. How far away from your... When the team finally reaches Bert, they're ready to go. The elephants have already moved on, but some injured ones are walking very slowly. There is time. But catching an elephant is no easy matter. It must first be darted and tranquilized. Ranger Ellis prepares several darts with different amounts of anaesthetic. He can't be sure what sized animal they may encounter.
Bert leads the team. And soon he finds the elephants. But getting a clear view, let alone a clear shot, will be difficult. There are two elephants close by. And one has a snare around its leg. The dark finds its target. Ellis indicates 10 minutes for the drug to do its work. But they can't move in yet. There are other elephants around. They need to frighten the others away with gunshots and flares. In this dense forest, the rescuers wouldn't stand a chance against an angry elephant. The drug dose is enough to put the elephant to sleep, but only just. It remains standing. In case it wakes too soon, it is firmly secured. It's a bad one, old and grown over, and the rope is still in there. Dr. Rosa, the vet, will have to remove it. This elephant is lucky that Bert was here to report the injury. Most injured elephants will never be seen. Bad snare. Two poles applied to the sensitive temples will keep her balanced and upright. They do no harm. Alice, antibiotics, please. With the rope removed, the next step is to stem infection. Protective creams and heavy doses of antibiotics will do the job. Okay. Must have suffered really bad. Dr. Sen administers the antidote to the tranquilizer. Hold on now. If everything goes well, she should wake up with a really bad hangover in about three to five minutes. <sighs> Within a few minutes, the rescued animal walks free this time without any pain. The team want to dart another female, this time for a different purpose. They've brought a tracking device supplied by Worldwide Fund for Nature. This brick-sized apparatus contains a satellite transmitter that will send back regular location reports of the elephant's movements. This female is named Bod Tai, and her high tech bow tie will make Bert's work much easier. Once she wakes up, she will become his new ally in helping him understand the mysteries of the pygmy elephants. Nine, seven, seven. Tai is one of five elephants that will be tagged in different parts of Sabah. 
Knowing where she and the other elephants are at any time will be crucial for future snare removing operations. Data from Bodtai's collar will be sent up to the satellite at daily intervals. Soon a picture of their migration route reveals not only where Bodtai and her family travels, but how long they spend in deep forest, swamp or near plantations. It also shows the crucial times and places they travel alongside the Kinabatangan River. No longer will Bert ever be in doubt of the elephant's whereabouts. Now he can spend more time watching them and less discomfort trying to find them. He doesn't have to follow every footstep. He can leave the deepest mud to the elephants. His research will help protect all of Saba's 1600 pygmy elephants. Feisty and Flora are fascinated by her collar. Flora wants to wear it. There's no doubt that Feisty and Flora will grow up close to humans. But what does their future hold? And what of little Fig? Just like a human baby, a baby elephant learns a great deal in its first few years. Fig will learn the family migration trails and where they now cannot go. The satellite data confirms Bert's discovery that his elephant family needs this land. But there is hope. Saba's government is now working with oil palm plantations to protect and replant the riverside forest, turning it into a corridor of life for the migrating elephants. Everywhere, attitudes are changing. For one thing, Bert doesn't have to track Flora these days. She's more likely to track him. I think one day Flora will be the matriarch. I hope she will be the one to lead the family into the future. Flora, Feisty, Fig and all the others in this remarkable elephant family have inspired the people of Saba to save them. Thanks to Bert Dalsip's journey of discovery, we now know more about Borneo's pygmy elephants than ever before. Once considered exotic pests, these wonderful and unique elephants do belong here. Fortunately, Saba's government has moved fast to protect them by ending large-scale logging on public lands. So long as they are free to travel their ancient migration routes, their future here on their island home will be secure.